Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry webcast. In this webcast, we're going to talk about combustion analysis. And in these problems, we're going to focus on using particle level diagrams to solve these problems. So what we're going to do is interpret particle level diagrams that are based on complete combustion of a hydrocarbon. College Board really emphasizes the use of particle level diagrams to probe understanding, especially for stoichiometry problems. And they use them a lot for these combustion analysis problems. And we're going to use them to figure out the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. I do want to point out that the questions we're going to be talking about in this webcast are designed to be done without a calculator. You can go ahead and put your calculator away and let's talk about combustion reactions a little bit. You learned, hopefully in your first year chemistry class, that combustion reactions involve oxygen as a reactant. And if we're doing combustion of a hydrocarbon, we're going to make CO2 and H2O. Now there's a relationship between the subscripts of the carbon and the hydrogen atoms in the hydrocarbon and the amounts of CO2 and H2O that we make. For each carbon in the hydrocarbon, we're gonna make that many CO2 molecules. So the subscript for carbon and the number of CO2 molecules would be the same. Since there are two hydrogen atoms in each water, whatever the subscript is for the hydrogens, we're gonna take half of that and make half as many water molecules. And so we can use this to figure out the formula of the hydrocarbon. Let's look at a particle level model of some products from a combustion reaction for a hydrocarbon. So if we count, we see there are five CO2 molecules in the products. And therefore, we can say that the carbon would have a subscript of five in that hydrocarbon formula. Similarly, if we count again, we see that there are six H2O molecules shown in the products. And that means the hydrogen would have a subscript of 12 in the formula. And therefore, we can state with confidence that this hydrocarbon has the formula C5H12. Some tips for solving these problems. Common mistakes, students will forget that each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. And if you don't take that into account properly, you're not going to get the right formula. The other thing to remember is that you're working backwards oftentimes in these problems. So you have to count each type of molecule. How many CO2s are there? How many H2Os are there? And from that, you can figure out the number of carbon atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms. And then you can find the ratio of carbon to hydrogen atoms for your formula. And you can work out an empirical formula from that. Let's use this strategy to work through a multiple choice problem. The particle level model below shows the results of combustion of a hydrocarbon. Which of the following could be the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon? So we're going to start by counting again. All right, there are seven CO2 molecules here. There are seven H2O molecules. And so from that, I can determine that there are seven carbons and 14 hydrogens. But if I look at my multiple choice possible answers, I don't have C7H14 as a choice. So I'm going to have to take it one step further and look at that ratio, All right? I can say that for one carbon, there are two hydrogens, and therefore the empirical formula of the correct answer has to be CH2. So to figure this out, I need to figure out the empirical formulas of the four choices. For choice A, the empirical formula is C3H8. I can't simplify that anymore. For choice B, C4H6, the empirical formula is C2H3, but that's not CH2. For choice C, the empirical formula would be C2H5, but I want CH2, so it must be D which does have an empirical formula of CH2, and therefore the correct answer is D. Let's work through another multiple choice problem. Which of the following particle level models correctly represents the products formed after the complete combustion of C6H6, which is commonly known as benzene? But you don't need to know that to solve this problem. So we have C6H6. So that's telling me I'm expecting six CO2s for three H2O. So they need to be in this two to one kind of ratio. We've got four choices, we've got four particle level models. So let's work through them one by one and figure out which one's got the right ratio. If we look at choice A, there are six CO2s and six H2Os. So that's not going to give me C6H6 as the hydrocarbon. If I look at choice B, I've got three CO2s and three H2Os. Again, that's not the ratio I need. If we look at choice C, ah, I've got six CO2s and three H2Os. That's gotta be my correct answer because it matches the ratio that I already determined I need. Just to be complete, let's look at choice D. Choice D has three CO2s and six H2Os. That's not the correct ratio either. And so I can say with confidence that the correct answer has to be C. As I was putting this webcast together, 
a couple of variations on these kinds of problems occur to me. One is that you could have a free response question where you're given the hydrocarbon and you're asked to draw an appropriate ratio of CO2 and H2O molecules. So you could draw your own diagram, your own particle level model. And you should expect somewhere in the AP exam that there will be at least one particle level model question that you'll be asked. Another variation is that you could have a third element involved in the problem, maybe nitrogen, maybe sulfur, could be oxygen. And so you can figure out the carbon to hydrogen ratio from the combustion analysis using the strategy they were using, and then figure out the correct answer from that and the rest of the information in the problem. So it could be a little more involved. Let's just wrap this up by summarizing what we've talked about. Do keep in mind that combustion analysis problems are really a subset of empirical formula problems, and you really need to be able to solve those. And if you don't remember how, I've got a whole webcast on that too. Remember when you're working with these particle level models, to count the CO2 molecules, count the H2O molecules. The number of CO2 molecules will give you the subscript for the carbon. Twice the number of the H2O molecules will give you the subscript for the H. From this, you can work out your empirical formula and identify your answer. They're very manageable problems. Just make sure you count correctly. If you enjoyed this webcast, if you found it to be helpful, subscribe to my channel, like the video, and keep practicing chemistry every day because that's how you get better.